Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. There's a math question that is stumping some year eight students in New Zealand. Year eight means approximately 12 years old. So here's a problem that was reported in the NMSSA. Here is a shaded circle that's divided by three vertical slices. They are equally spaced across the diameter of the circle. Here's the question. Is one fourth of this circle shaded? Yes or no? Explain why you think this. You can use words and pictures. So what's the answer to this question? Without a doubt, the correct answer is no. One fourth of this circle is not shaded. Yes would be an incorrect response. So how did students do? So here's the statistics for year four students who are approximately eight years old. 86% gave the wrong answer, saying one fourth of the circle is shaded, and only 14% gave the correct answer. Now you might think year four is just the beginning, people are just learning fractions, and maybe over time they will learn. So you would expect four years later that more students would get the correct answer. But unfortunately, by year eight, 81% of students are still picking the wrong answer. Only 19% of students would get this question right. So what's going on? So one thought that crossed our mind is whether changing this question to a different context would make a difference. Imagine you had a perfectly circular pizza and you slice it up in the same way that the circle was divided. Let's say you ask the students to compare the areas of these two slices. You could directly ask them, which piece has more area? I think almost every student would be able to identify the slice on the left is larger than the slice on the right. If given the choice of which slice they would want, most students would probably pick this slice. In my experience, kids even at a very young age seem to know which slice of pizza or cake is bigger and especially if you've had siblings, you must have fought over the last slice of pizza. So they can solve the question in a different context, but this still doesn't take away from the fact that students are poor at performing fractions questions in a textbook setting. So here's another question that was asked. What is one over two plus one over four equal to? It should be that every student gets the correct answer of three over four. But here is how students at year eight actually performed over time. In 1997, 45% selected the correct answer. But by 2022, only 32% of students got the correct answer. That's one in three students who were able to solve this simple fractions question. Fractions are difficult for many students. So let's go back to the original question and look at the reasoning of students who did get this question correct. They looked at this circle divided up and they said it was not divided up into equal parts. This would be different than if you had a rectangle divided by vertical line segments that were equally spaced. Here, the shaded blue area would be an equal part and it would be one fourth of the entire circle. It would also be different if the circle was divided into four equal slices where you have two diameters that are perpendicular to each other. If you shade one of these pieces, that would be equal parts. Some students also just saw that visually, this area would be much smaller than the slice right next to it. So we have effectively reasoned that the circular segment that's shaded is not one fourth of the entire area of the circle. But that does lead to the question, what fraction is shaded that's shown in blue? In order to solve for the area of a circular segment, we need to do a little bit of trigonometry. So let me just refresh that formula. Imagine you have a circular sector with the radius equal to r and a central angle equal to theta. This area is equal to 1 half multiplied by r squared multiplied by theta, where theta is in radians. Now let's take a triangle where one side is a and the adjacent side is b, and we have this angle between the two sides that's equal to c. Any triangle with these dimensions will have an area of 1 half multiplied by a multiplied by b multiplied by the sine of angle c. So now let's make this triangle 
the triangle that's emanating from the center of the circle. So let's set A to be equal to R and B to be equal to R. The formula then has R multiplied by R, which is equal to R squared. Let's set the angle C to be equal to theta. So the area of this triangle is 1 half R squared sine theta. If we subtract the area of this triangle from the area of the circular sector, we get the area of a circular segment. So we just apply these formulas and we get this is equal to 1 half R squared theta minus 1 half R squared sine theta. Factoring the R squared gives 1 half R squared multiplied by the quantity theta minus sine theta. And that's the area of a circular segment. We will use this formula to solve this problem. So we have a circle that's divided up by equally spaced vertical segments, and we need to figure out the area that's shaded by this blue circular segment. Let's construct a horizontal diameter. Now let's construct radii that connect to the endpoints of the chord of the circular segment. Let's say that each of these radii has a length equal to r. Now these vertical line segments are equally spaced. So from the center to the endpoint will be r, and this is divided in half. So each of these segments will be equal to r over 2. Let's now look at this right triangle. We have a right triangle where the hypotenuse is twice the length of one of its legs. So this must be a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So the angle opposite r over 2 will be 30 degrees, and the other angle that's acute will be 60 degrees. We can then also figure out this length if we wanted to. Now this triangle here will be a mirror image of the triangle above it, and so this angle is also equal to 60 degrees. The area of the circular segment, shown in blue, will be equal to the area of the entire circular sector minus the area of the green triangle. So all that remains is to figure out the relevant dimensions. Now what's the central angle equal to? It will be equal to 60 plus 60, which is equal to 120 degrees. Converting that into radians gives 2 pi over 3. So we now go ahead and use our formula for the area of a circular segment. This is 1 half r squared multiplied by the quantity theta minus sine theta. We substitute in for theta, then sine of 2 pi over 3 will be equal to root 3 over 2, so we substitute that in. So we calculated the area of the circular segment in terms of r. Let's focus on this formula. We now need to calculate the fraction of the entire circle that's shaded, so we divide this by the area of the circle, which is equal to pi r squared. The r squared terms will cancel out, and this simplifies to be 1 over 2 pi multiplied by 2 pi over 3 minus root 3 over 2. We simplify the formula to get 1 over 3 minus root 3 over 4 pi, and that's approximately equal to 19.6%. So when the circle is divided into equally spaced vertical slices, the circular segment will not be 25% of the total area, but it will be pretty close at about 20%. So it's not one fourth of the circle that's shaded, but it's about one-fifth. So this now leads to another interesting question. Imagine we were to change where this slice is and we move it closer to the center of the circle. The area of the circular segment is going to increase. So at what point can we move this so that we can make the blue slice one-fourth of the total area so that it will exactly be equal to one of these quarter circles? Now I can already hear some students say, but when are we ever going to need this? In order to answer that question, let me rephrase the question in a slightly different context. Let's rotate the entire diagram 90 degrees and then focus on just these components. Here's how this question might be useful on a day-to-day -day basis. Think about a milk, water, or fuel tanker. The tank is a cylinder that's resting horizontally on its side and the tank is filled up to some level with fluid. How do you know how much fluid is in the tank by volume? A practical solution is to dip a rod inside of this tank and see the level at which the fluid is reaching. If you know the mark on the rod, you can then figure out how much fluid is in the tank. 
So just to explain this a little bit more carefully, we have a cylindrical tank and we're going to fill it up to some level with a fluid. Now the volume of this will be proportional to just the area of the cross section. So all we need to do is look at the cross section, which will be a circle with a circular segment. So now let's phrase the question. Suppose we want to fill the fluid level up to some level that will be 25% of the area of the circle. Suppose that the rod has a unit length that's equal to 1, and let's say the height of the fluid is equal to h. So what percentage of the rod will be necessary so that we get a quarter of the tank full? In other words, solve for h such that the blue area is one-fourth of the circle's area. We're not going to be able to find a closed form exact value. The job is to solve three decimal places. And I thank Bob Rienzi for this suggestion. As I did some research, this is known as the quarter tank problem. So let's proceed to solve this question. We start by constructing the center of the circle and constructing radii to the endpoints of the chord of the circular segment. The diameter of the circle is equal to one, so each radii will be half of that. So each radius length will be equal to 0.5. We then need to calculate this central angle Let's label this as equal to theta. We can solve for the area of the circular segment using the formula we derived earlier. We want this to be equal to one quarter of the circle's area. The circle's area is pi r squared, so we set this equal to pi r squared divided by 4. The r squared terms will cancel on both sides, and we now have an equation in just the variable theta. One half multiplied by the quantity theta minus sine theta is equal to pi over 4. We won't be able to get a closed form or exact value for this, so we will go ahead and use a numerical solver. We get that theta is approximately equal to 2.3099. Let's now proceed by focusing on this right triangle. Let me magnify the dimensions. The hypotenuse is equal to the radius, then this angle will be half of the central angle theta, so it's equal to theta over two. Let's label this vertical length as equal to y. We can solve for the length of y. It will be equal to 0.5 cosine of theta over two. Substituting in the approximate value for theta, we can get an approximate value for y as 0.202. Then h will be equal to the radius of this circle minus y. So h is equal to r minus y. We substitute in and we get that h is approximately equal to 0.298. So that's the answer to the question. Let me just translate it back into practical terms. So if you have a cylindrical tank that's on its side, in order to get the tank a quarter full, the fluid level should be about 30% of the height of the tank, or about 30% of the circle's diameter. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.